Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Condon Community Church. Uh, just a few things here before we got the Kramers here this morning, so I'll try to be brief in, in the opening here. Um, but why don't we start off just with a, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just thankful for the opportunity we have to be gathered here this morning, and uh, I just pray that in everything we do here today, we can direct the glory to you, because you're certainly deserving of that, and uh, as we go through here this morning, we just pray that you'll speak to us through your word, through the music of the Kramers, through Bruce's message, uh, and even as we partake in communion at the end of the service, I just pray that you will help us to truly grasp the meaning of, of what that is, and just everything that Jesus did for us by dying on the cross. And that's really what it's all about. And we just thank you for that this morning, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so just a few quick announcements. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow there will be a ladies' tea with um, Rachel and Maria Kramer. So that will be at 2 p.m. tomorrow. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and then we have the Tuesday night Bible study as normal this week at 6.30. Um, and then Thursday at 8 a.m. there will be a, a work day at the church. Um, and I also had, Carolyn said there's a bunch of leftover lettuce, tomatoes, and onions that aren't really savable. And so we'd like to give them away to people that can use them. So I guess just see Carolyn after if you have the need for lettuce, tomatoes, or onions. <laughs> The meat we can freeze and save and stuff that was left over from yesterday, but the more perishable stuff we need to get rid of. So, uh, and you can look, uh, you know, be be praying for the camps. There's you know there's camps going on in the utmost every week, and I imagine that Camp Elohim and um, Luana too. And so, you know, just keep them in your prayers. That's you know it's a a good ministry of of the Rock Mountain Bible Mission, I think, and it's it's important to pray for those camps. It's only a month. We've got BBS coming up, so I'll be praying for that. And, you know, I'm sure Barb won't reject any workers if, if you're willing to help her. So just let her know if you want to help out with Bible study, or I mean with Bible school. We do have a birthday this week. Brenda Mitchell, she's now in Texas, so she's not here. Today. But why don't we? I guess I can ask first is there any other birthdays that. Might not have got. No, we do. Like two more. Okay. There's two. Mom. Oh. We got. We got people. Well, why don't we sing Happy Birthday? Happy Birthday. anniversary this week, Mike and Linda Shuff. See them out there this morning, but if you see them this week, wish them a happy anniversary. I just have a, a brief scripture this morning, and you might notice I don't have my Bible, there's nothing to sit on up here, but it is it is out of the Word of God, so uh, I was just thinking, you know, with, with the 4th of July and stuff, you know, we celebrate the freedom of our country. Um, but we also, you know, the freedom we have as Christians is much beyond that. You know, when they, you know, back in those days, they they were living under oppressive Roman rule, which you know, it's probably hard for us to even imagine, you know, just enjoying the freedoms that we do. But yet they could celebrate their freedom in Christ. And I'm just going to read it's just a single verse from, from Galatians 5, chapter 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. I think that's just a you know, good verse for us to remember that you know, we're free in Christ, but we can't you know, abuse that freedom, and we, you know, we're really called to love one another. And that's, you know, the, even though we're free from the law in terms of making ourselves right before God, and that was done solely by Jesus' work on the cross, yet we're still called to love one another. And that's really what summed up the whole law to begin with. And so... Uh, just something for us to think about this week. So just we'll quick over our prayer requests here before um, 
we get to the Kramer. So um, just for healing, we have Jim Moore. He uh, needs healing from his from his surgery. Uh, Karen's sister Sharon had surgery this week as well, and I think everything went well. But she needs continued prayer for healing. Um, the Rippy's granddaughter Taylor. She also needs healing from. She's gone through some surgery. Jolaine's um, son Michael is in need of the miracle of healing. He had a stroke and, and you know isn't in a very good place, and so we need to lift him up. Uh, Jim Arthur's brother Tom is going through some issues as well, and so we can pray for healing for him. And um, also Deb Krantz is going in for knee surgery this week, and so let's pray for her. Pray for the doctors that they'll. Won't slip up or anything, and then she'll come back good as good as new, maybe a little bit better. So let's let's lift her up this week as she goes in for surgery. Uh, just people traveling. I mean, there's a lot of people coming and going at this time of year. Let's lift up the Kramers as they travel back home this week, and just for the you know the different seasonals that are traveling around. And then just you know continue to remember our country, our nation, our leadership, uh, the military, fire, police officers. And all these are prayers. So let's just take a little bit of time here and, and pray for some of these. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we just want to lift up these requests that we have this morning, that these people that need healing, we think of Jim and Sharon, Taylor, Michael, um, Tom. You know their, their specific needs. And for Debbie this week as she goes in, we just pray for healing for her and just guidance for the doctors as well as they perform this surgery. For those who are traveling, we just pray for safety on the roads and you know, we just look out here on the highway, there's so many people going up and down and every once in a while a deer popping out there. So we just pray for safety for everyone who's traveling this road and just you know, beyond that as well. Um, we just lift them up for safety for you and we do pray for our country. We, we thank you that we're privileged to live in, in such a place that we have the freedoms we do. but. There's a lot of dissension right now as well. And we just turn that over to you. We just pray that you will call people back to yourself. That, that there can be re true, real revival in this country. And, and we just pray that, that hearts can, can be changed. and Because we know that's really the solution. And we pray for those who put their lives on the line to protect us. To um, you know, take care of, of the law and order in this country, I guess, and, and even beyond that, you know, for people in the military, we lift them up to you. We pray protection for them as well this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I think we also want to do the offering before I get out of here. So. I don't know, I guess I should get somebody else. Chuck, can you come up and help with it? Heavenly right, Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day and this, this opportunity to, to worship in song, uh, worship you in, in song. We just pray that you be with the Kramers as they, as they bring this message to us. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you just give us every single day. And uh, and now accept just a small part of that back to, to do your service and, and to show your life to the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Thanks, Carolyn. And so with that, um, I won't bother you with me anymore, so we'll just yeah. enter. Yeah. I just want to thank everyone for my healing. I have been had the third test declared schizophrenic. So I'm back amongst humanity. Very grateful. So with that we'll turn it over to the Kramers and I'm sure we'll be blessed by them. Oh my. I got to talk to a couple of you that hadn't been here before about the Kramers. Did I exaggerate? Yeah. Did I tell the truth, Craig? Yes. It's wonderful. We love having them here, don't we? Let's show them how we appreciate it. Well, I had a little short devotional prepared while they uh, were taking a break. But I think I'm just going to get my coffee cup and set out. <laughs> you, you watch that for me, okay, Ben? Because Chuck's been eyeballing that coffee cup. If he gets a chance, I'll never make it home. <laughs> and it's great. It's great to see everybody today. We've got a lot of folks that, uh, you know, have been staying home for the week because of this coronavirus. And so I just, uh, we miss them, but boy, they really missed a special service today, didn't they? And so... But I'm glad to see everybody that's here, and I want to pause for just a minute. We have a special Fourth of July event. We've done that for three years now. We have uh, fed the community, and uh, I think the first year we fed about 500, and last year it was about 600. And this year it was down a little bit because of the virus, and uh, but we still fed almost 400 meals. And so I want to thank everybody that helped us. That's special. It's a special time. So. We're going to step away from the book of Galatians today because I'm not going to be up here very long. The Kramers are going to come back up again and you're going to get to enjoy their music for a while. But I just want to spend a little time and talk to you, uh, kind of reflect a little bit about what is going on in our country right now and the division that we see here. And, and I know it troubles a lot of you and it troubles me and we just wonder what's going on and where are we going to do from here. And it's just. You know, it's really a simple matter if, if this country's turned its back on God. And we just have to get back. We just have to get back to worshiping and praising God in this country and being thankful to God for all that He's given us. Look around us. We have been blessed. But you know, in Galatians last week we were we were led to the verses where the apostle uh, writing under the influence of the Holy Spirit said that there is absolutely no difference. There is so much division in this country. But God told us 2,000 years ago there is no difference, male, female, free, slave, Jew, Gentile, in God's sight, which is the only thing in the end that counts, there's no difference. And we just see so much attempt either at legitimate division in this country are attempts to divide this country. But folks, you know, I, I kind of told you this last week, I'm going to repeat myself, but there is a great deal of responsibility on us. On us. We are the manner in which God chose to reflect His Son through the indwelling of His Holy Spirit in us. So we have a responsibility here. If there is going to be a revival in this country, and I pray that there is, it starts with us. So I want you to consider that what our relationship is with others reflects what our relationship is with God. The fact is, how we deal and how we feel about other people shows clearly whether or not we have a genuine relationship with God. And, and I have to be honest, and perhaps some of you too, there are certainly times when that is one thing that I probably don't want to hear. There is times that I would rather just forget and not deal with people that have hurt me. There is times that I would like to rationalize away the times that I have hurt others. 
I would like to just kind of be content and happy and just smugly go my way with my life with Jesus. At least that's what we'd like to think. But that's not the way it works. That's not God's plan for our Christian walk. And simply, if we're not doing well with other people, we are not doing well with God. I want to look just briefly at one verse in Matthew and then some other verses here in Scripture. I'll be bouncing around a little bit, but I want to start off with Matthew 5.24. You just let that little girl, we need more charismatic. <laughs> you just let her join in. I appreciate it. She's not going to bother me. The louder she gets, the more I turn my microphone. On, so. That's right. That's right. But before we go to Scripture, let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I do just lift this time up to you now. I'm thankful to you, Father, that you brought the Kramer family to us again. What a blessing, Father. I just thank you for their willingness, not only to share their musical ability that you have given them, Father, what a talent, but to share their testimony. We so clearly see your Holy Spirit reflected in their life. And now, Father, I just pray for your guidance and blessing on the rest of this service. And I pray all of it in Jesus' name. Matthew 5.24, Jesus speaking there tells us, first be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offerings. A clear indication that Jesus wanted reconciliation between Christian brothers and sisters before he wanted offering given, and given to himself. And additionally, also in Matthew, in the 22nd chapter, he says that my, the proof of my love for God is how well I treat my neighbor. And then he goes on and Luke to tell us who our neighbor is. That is everybody that we come into contact with, folks, that we have an opportunity to show God's love to. In 1 John, in chapter 4, he tells us that if we hate our brother, we cannot love God. It's just that simple. And in Mark eleven twenty-five, 25, he says that to be forgiven by God, we must first be willing to forgive others. And 1 Peter, boy, pay attention to this one, the husbands. In 1 Peter 37, or excuse me, in 1 Peter 3, verse 7, somebody said, what Bible does he have with 37 <laughs> chapters in 1 Peter? But in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, he tells me that if I mistreat my wife, my prayers will go unanswered. You feel like your prayers are bouncing right off the ceiling? Take a look at your relationship with your spouse. God is so interested, so interested in the well-being, has such a love for others, we always need to remember that He left the glories of heaven. He came to a lost world. He suffered. He died. And He rose again to prove that point. When we treat others poorly, we're abusing what He loves. And as much as we'd like to ignore it, clips. Scripture is absolutely clear that when we offend others, we also offend Him. He died to forgive even the worst of sinners. And when we refuse to forgive, we violate the character of God and refuse to give others the gift that God has so graciously given us. If you want to truly know what God thinks about folks who have been forgiven yet refuse to forgive themselves. When you go home today, look at Matthew 18. Turn to Matthew 18 and look at verses 21 through 35. You know, as I was putting this little morbid devotional, this little short message together, I got to thinking that I told you before, when we see other people, what we need to see is someone that God loves, someone who was created in God's image, someone who God came to earth to die for. But maybe we need to modify the way we think about people even a little more. Maybe instead of looking at folks and saying, oh, that poor non-believer, that poor unchurched person, maybe we need to look at them as a potential brother and sister in Christ and do what we can to help them along that path. Because, folks, until they take their last breath when Jesus Christ returns, that is what they are. They are not outside of the reach of God and His salvation. They are potential brothers and sisters in Christ 
There's a story told about Da Vinci, and he's doing his famous painting of the Last Supper. And reportedly, while he's working on the painting, he got mad and he lashed out in anger at a friend of his. And after doing that, he returned to his work. And he tried, tried in vain, but he tried mightily to brush some very fine strokes on the face of Jesus Christ. You think he could do it? No, he couldn't. He was a, he was a, a great master. But he wasn't able to do it. Not until he put his paintbrush down, went and found his friend, and apologized and asked for forgiveness. Then he could return and finish that masterpiece. The point of that story is, again, our fellowship with God is never going to be what we desire it to be until our relationship with others is what God desires it to be. He not only desires it, folks, he commands it. And most of you that have been here have heard me say it before. He doesn't say, it would really be nice, I would really like it if you love others. He commanded us to love others. So for all of us today, I would just ask a simple question. Is there anyone in our life whom we have refused to love, whom we have refused to forgive. You know, you may have an issue. There may be somebody that you feel like you need to forgive, and they may need to, uh, may need to forgive you. They may not accept it. Understand, there are some things that are beyond our control, and the Bible tells us, as much as is possible for you, live at peace with all people. Well, that also tells us that in some cases that's not going to be possible. But in your heart, in your heart, are you willing to forgive everybody? That's where we need to be as Christians. Can you imagine in this world, as divisive and as ugly and as hateful as it is right now, for folks to see that, to see that love of Christ in each and every Christian, can you imagine how compelling, how convicting that would be to the world? I pray that that's where we are. I pray that each and every one of you here today knows Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That life's not going to be there, folks, if you haven't accepted Him, if He is not your Lord and Savior. If you haven't, I would pray that you would do so today. Now, we're going to have the Kramers come back up here in just a minute, and then after they're done today, uh, which can wait and go as long as they want to, can't they? Is there anybody in a hurry to get home and take the roast out of the oven? No. We love them. They can go as long as they want to, but when they have finished, well, we're going to have communion. It is our communion Sunday. So let me again, let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, I just thank you for your, your words, Father. I just thank you for this Holy Scripture that you have preserved for us through all of this time. I thank you just for the, for the truth, the honesty, and the guidance that we find there. And Father, I thank you for this body of believers. I want to pray for those that couldn't be with us today because of this coronavirus. I, I'm thankful for all of those that uh, will be watching this uh, through YouTube. And we just... We just love each and every one of you, and we especially miss those of you that couldn't be here. And now I just pray for the rest of this time that it is a blessing, Father, that it brings you praise, honor, and glory. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks. We just love these guys, don't we? Would you hold that for me for just a minute? Watch that guy right over there. He's going to keep it out. All right. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you, guys. We do it. We keep you in our prayers all the time, too. So just what a, what a wonderful family. And so we're just so blessed to have them come to this little church the way they do and just to, to bless us with their with their talents. And again, I said the testimony, too. Don't they have a wonderful testimony? You know, we're going to go into communion, and I almost shouldn't say anything because Rachel said, shared the gospel story. 
good news of Jesus Christ better than I ever can, but since I guess that's what I get paid for, I'll do my best too to kind of follow up. Uh, we are going to go into communion now. It is our communion uh, Sunday, and I'm going to ask Leon and Chuck to come up and give me a hand. And uh, we don't normally have to do this, but since the coronavirus, we thought we were clever, and we were going to go to these little self-contained units, and those of you that have been here know what they are, but there's actually two flaps on the top of them, and when you open the very top one, it exposes the wafer, and then the next one, the juice. And men, I want you to watch this here, because for you men, this is the best way to get these open. <laughs> spill it all over myself if I try to do it. All right, there it is. So. Now, as I always remind you, you certainly, uh, i put that somewhere, I'll still spill it. Uh, you certainly do not have to be a member of Condon Community Church to partake in this memorial. Uh, the Bible does instruct us we need to be a child of God. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would invite you to join us today in this communion. And uh, if you haven't, well, we can take care of that too before the day's over. We would love to talk to you. And so um, well, I'm going to start off. I'm going to ask Leon if he would to uh, share a prayer for the body and the bread, please. <laughs> Heavenly Fathers, we take this remembrance this morning. I pray that you will impress us on, on us truly how greatest sacrifice that Jesus Christ made to allow his body to be broken on our behalf that, that we could be made whole even though he was broken we can be made right before you and we just thank you for that so much this morning we thank you that you saw fit in your great love for us to, to provide that way out for us and we thank you that you sent Jesus and we thank you that Jesus was willing to be made the sacrifice for us and we just celebrate that this morning here, but yet we understand the great sacrifice that Jesus made for us, and we thank you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. As I normally do, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to begin with the 23rd verse, and here we have the Apostle Paul's instructions to the church at Corinth regarding this communion service. Beginning in verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Please join me for taking the bread. Continuing in verse 25. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So I'd ask you now to partake of the cup. And finally, in verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Heavenly Father, this is such a bittersweet time for us as Christians. It's bitter because we consider the suffering and the sacrifice of your Son. It's bitter because when we see the awfulness that he had to experience, we just understand the depth of our sin and what a price it took to cover that sin, Father, but it is also sweet. As we have all already heard here today, we know that when we breathe our last or when your son returns, whatever happens first, because of that sacrifice, we have the opportunity to spend all eternity in your presence. And what a glorious day that will be, Father. And we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, when you go out, we have put receptacles kind of at both ends, and so we'll just ask you to deposit these uh, at that time. Uh, we are going to stand and sing, Bless Me the Tithe, aren't we? Did I do that right? Okay. But before I do, I want to remind you, we want to support the Kramer's ministry. We support them as a church, but we want to give you the opportunity today to, uh, to support them individually. And um, actually, I'm not sure I see the, uh, the basket there. It is there? It's not. It's not. I see one that says praise and prayer. We're gonna we'll make sure that there's a basket there. We want you to have the opportunity individually to support the Kramers today. And again, thank you guys for coming. Yeah, we love you. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank them, folks. Heavenly Father, I again, I just thank you for this body of believers. I just pray, Father, that we would understand the responsibility that you have given us, Father, to be your light bearers. And we just pray that uh, with our whole hearts, we would just serve you, love you, and be in constant thankfulness for what you have done. And again, I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Yep. I don't sing. I shut the mic off. <laughs> Leon, would you lead us in the group?
love on the Kramers and let them know how much you appreciate it. Okay, it'll be your last chance till next year, which we're going to book in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.